Okay guys, Halfcat123 here from halfcat123.com. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Galaxy S on Verizon. Um, this is pretty much going to be a review for all the Galaxy S3s as this is pretty much the same thing. There's nothing really too different besides uh, the internals uh, as far as, you know, which carrier it's on or whether it's CDMA or, or GSM. So this is the CDMA LTE variant of the Galaxy S3 on Verizon. Um, I, you know, I think the, the first thing I think we should talk about before we go into the software, obviously, is the uh, hardware itself. Uh, the buttons are very uh, low profile, and they really feel like they're part of the uh, part of the phone rather than buttons on the phone, uh, I would say. It's just very sleek. Um, I, I don't know, I can't say whether or not I would consider that, you know, awesome or, you know, if I like that or not, but... Uh, it's, you know, it, the power button's a little strange as far as getting your finger on it and, and unlocking the screen. It's a little bit, a little bit wobbly. Um, I, I have to say I'm not really too impressed with the, the way they situated the, the, the flash, the camera, and, uh, and the speaker there on the back. Um, it's just kind of blah, you know, um, as opposed to the Galaxy Nexus where, you know, it, it looks, it looks nice, you know. So, it's a little bit kind of kind of whatever on the back there and the in the back cover also kind of whatever <laughs> so I mean you know but when the front on the front I mean they they kept the the euro button that the galaxy 2 and galaxy 1 have had in the past uh, and they brought that to the states which is pretty amazing considering uh, Apple's lawsuits you think they'd want to keep as far away from the iPhone as possible uh, and in this in this situation it seems they've taken a a little bit of a step towards well also at the same time as taking a step away with even even larger screen size uh, amongst other things that the iPhone uh, does not have um, so on the front there on the uh, home on the lock screen um, you know there's that that watery lock screen which is kind of cool they galaxy or Samsung has really taken a huge step towards nature with this uh, iteration of the galaxy s series um, the dandy line of the wallpapers are all nature centered. Um, pretty much everything about the phone, the sounds, everything uh, is is really nature centered. Um, they've done a pretty good job of staying true to AOSP, and I think this is something that you'll see across the board, uh, on, even on other manufacturers like HTC Sense 4.0 is starting to kind of take a turn towards AOSP, and I've said that in other videos. Um, of course, there are the there are definite uh, you know, touch whiz things here that, you know, you don't see in AOSP. Um, but, you know, they've really done a really fantastic job of, of kind of combining both worlds, you know, their own manufacturer overlay uh, with the actual stock AOSP. But there's definitely, this is definitely a touch whiz, an obvious touch whiz rendition of ICS, which, you know, I, I don't really, I can't speak against touch whiz. I think touch whiz is fine. My first phone was a Galaxy S uh, 1 series on T-Mobile, the Vibrant. And I absolutely love that phone, and I, I absolutely love this phone. Um, I have grown apart from TouchWiz just because I've, you know, I've, I've gotten a chance to go AOSP after I got a Nexus S uh, ever since Gingerbread, um, and uh, and I, you know, I'll never go back. I'm actually running Jelly Bean on this Galaxy Nexus here, and it's just phenomenal. Um, I'd like to kind of take a look at both phones and kind of compare and contrast. Uh, this phone um, does not seem to suffer from any lag that I've seen so far. Um, as far as uh, opening apps and things like that, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that it's two gigabytes of RAM. Um, Jelly Bean actually solved the lag issue in the software itself. So, um, you know, Samsung said, you know, well, let's take this RAM and just go crazy with it and see if we can get the lag, you know, down to nothing. And I think they've accomplished really the same thing that that Jelly Bean has. Um, software-wise, hardware-wise. So I think once Jelly Bean comes to this device officially, this device is going to be as lag-free as you can possibly get. I mean, 2 gigs of RAM, uh, you know, it's a dual-core beast of a phone, 1.5 gigahertz, and, uh, you know, with Jelly Bean, you're, gonna t you're talking about a total software-hardware combination titan. Um, and I think that it's already there, so, I mean, bringing Jelly Bean to this platform is just going to be unbelievable. Um, so... You know, widgets, uh, I don't really feel the need to really get into widgets too much as I'm not really a big widgets guy, but just for you guys. Um, the weather widget, not really a huge fan of the font. I think LG has done a better job of, of the weather, weather widgets myself. 
Um, I actually don't like this layout. I don't like my search bar in the middle. I like it at the top. Um, I've actually had a pretty big battle myself with deciding who gets the front screen, whether you know the Google search widget or the weather widget. So that's kind of an ongoing thing for me. Um, let's take a look at some of the widgets here in the in the widget selection. So they have uh, looks like the alarm app. It's kind of a big alarm app, kind of like the home screen weather. It looks like let's, let's see what that looks like when we put it on the on the screen. Uh, it's actually small, but once again, you can we, you can resize widgets, and I'm not sure if I guess it'll just show multiple alarms if you resize. Um, one thing about this is there's a couple features they've done a lot with motion, and uh, in in TouchWiz, um, if you select, uh, let's say I select this icon, I've actually enabled motion. So when I turn the when I turn the phone, it actually lets me choose what screen to put it on uh, versus versus actually dragging it so I can just turn the turn the screen and drop and drop drop the icon there um, kind of a useless feature I think in my in, in, in from my perspective but uh, you know it, I think it's faster than having the drag <clears throat> but uh, it just kinda seems lazy but I mean I guess that's what having the smartphones all about right less less work for us more work for the technology um, I, I like the I like the dock bar very simple, like the apps on the right side versus the middle. I think that's different. It's, I like that. It's nice. It's neat. Um, love the scrollable quick access uh, toggles at the top of the drop down menu. Fantastic. Quick access to the settings menu here. I love that they didn't incorporate a recents button instead of a menu button. I think that was a really good move. Um, you know, I like having my menu button all the time right there. I don't want to have to pull this down and hit that to get to the mint to the settings. I like to be able to just hit menu settings, and I think a lot of people would agree with that. But you still can do the recents, which I do like as well, by holding down the home key, uh, which you get your recent apps there. You can close them or access them uh, regardless, however you want to get to it. Um, and also, of course, you can replace, just like AOSP, you can replace the icons at the bottom of the dock, however you want. I don't think you can move the apps one, but yeah, so you can replace that. Um, overall, really fast. Uh, let's uh, let's bust out a quadrant score, should we? I think we should. I'm not sure if I have it on here already or not. Um, and then, of course, in the app drawer, it doesn't actually transition from apps to widgets. You actually have to click on widgets or tap on widgets or apps to go between them. Which uh, eh, I'm not really sure, you know, what way I'd go on that. I mean, I'm so used to AOSP where it just goes right to it that it's kind of kind of strange. But I mean, hey, maybe that's the best way to go. Who knows? Um, it doesn't appear that I have Quadrant, so I'm going to go ahead and download Quadrant, and I can't do it that way, so let me go back, and this is a little annoying. I don't want that to be my download app, so I'd rather that be the market, which is how it is in AOSP. Um, so I'm going to go here, click there, and now it's not swipe, Quadrant. I definitely have gotten very used to swipe. That's pretty much all I do is swipe everything. Okay, so let's run a quadrant. I did run a quadrant on this when I first got it, and it was really phenomenal for a for a phone right out of the box with no mods or anything. This is actually rooted, but um, it's obviously rooting isn't going to have any effect on the uh, on the performance. Uh, we haven't done anything as far as kernels. Obviously, you can't on the Verizon model, not until they release the developer edition or until somebody comes up with a way to make that happen. Um, I'm sure it's probably right around the corner, but I mean the screen on this thing is just unbelievable I mean if you look at like the Galaxy Nexus I mean, you know you have that big black uh, rectangle at the bottom where the where the uh, Soft keys are so it really may even though this is a 4.65 inch screen for the Nexus It really turns it into like a 4.3 inch uh, with soft keys at the bottom But with the Samsung Galaxy Net or the Samsung Galaxy S3 you get that full-on effect of that huge 4.8 inch screen uh, which I think just you know, blasts away the Galaxy Nexus in that respect, and uh, I kind of, I kind of wish I could experience that in my Galaxy Nexus. But so as you can see, it blows away the HTC One X, and I do believe this One X score is the quad core one from uh, <clears throat> from Europe, the Endeavor U or the international version. So this is a dual core phone, pretty much blowing away the quad core One X uh, with a 5,093 stock score. That is very, very impressive, uh, extremely impressive. This is not de-bloated, this is not modded, hacked in any way, shape, or form. This is just pure 
Samsung TouchWiz ICS Madness. It's at its best. So there you see it, 5,020 or 5,093 going on a 5,100 quadrant score. That is by far the highest quadrant score I've ever seen in person of a stock phone. Um, I, I know that phones have gotten higher than that, but I've, I've never actually seen a, a score that high. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to mess with like the quad-core tablets or anything like that or um, the One X quad-core phone with you know mods or anything so I, I mean I know the G2X also and the Galaxy S2 were able to get really high scores um, but uh, I hadn't had a chance to mess with those either so so uh, in that respect I may be somewhat of a noob but uh, I, I still think 5100 is, is pretty pretty amazing so all in all guys this is uh, an amazing phone I would say that you know even if you didn't like it you'd have to give it at least a four and a half out of five stars uh, it delivers on so many different levels. It delivers on performance. It delivers on uh, just absolute beauty. Everything about the phone is just amazing. Um, it's uh, it's pure and simple. It's just a, it's an amazing Android phone. It's the pinnacle of what an Android phone should be. It's the poster child of just absolute amazement. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean. If you're thinking about getting one, you haven't got one yet, um, I would consider getting the unlocked version if you're going one for Verizon. Otherwise, if you're on a different carrier, straight shooting, or if you don't care about rooting, it doesn't matter. But if you care about rooting, I would steer clear of Verizon. If you have Verizon, don't have a choice. It's still an amazing phone. Um, I really wouldn't see any reason really to even use a custom ROM unless you absolutely had to have AOSP, which I, I myself want AOSP terribly bad on the on the Samsung Galaxy S3, but let's just do a quick comparison. Um, let's start off. I'm actually using the Apex launcher on here, but like this is just stock AOSP jelly bean, which essentially ice cream sandwich. I mean, it's pretty. It's you know, there's no real differences between jelly bean and ice cream sandwich as far as aesthetically on the home screens. Um, so, you know, basically, you know, I, well, jelly bean's kind of a it's a bad example because jelly bean's going to be faster. It's going to be more responsive. Uh, even if it's negligible, um, jelly. The only place where jelly bean starts hurting is the is the widget section, uh, because it's it transitions right from the apps right into the widgets. So there's going to be a little bit of lag, but it's so hard hard to see. Um, and then of course on the widgets on the Galaxy S3, I did see a little bit of lag there. You see that it's it's hard for it to display all those widgets right away when you immediately go into the afterwards. So I mean, and I mean, I know who cares about widgets or whatever as far as it displaying them, but this is just an example of, of how the performance is when you're doing multitasking. And uh, and once you've already done it once, it appears it has no problem loading it. But so, but the Galaxy Nexus does it pretty well. It just has a little bit of, it takes a second for it to display. And that's one of the things about the Galaxy Nexus on Jelly Bean. Uh, is they've separated out the software and the hardware part of the rendering so uh, it, it doesn't actually let uh, a laggy process interfere with the graphics which is why Jelly Bean shines that's actually the uh, the basics of Project Butter so um, so anyways there you have it folks Galaxy Nexus and, and Samsung Galaxy S3 side by side um, you can really tell how, how much bigger the screen is I mean if you look I mean here's where the bottom of the Galaxy Nexus usable screen ends and the Samsung Galaxy S3 begins. So, I mean, it's, you know, and even with the soft keys, you can tell how much bigger the screen is. I mean, it's that one tenth of an inch makes a pretty big difference. So, anyways, uh, my score five, four and a half stars out of five. Uh, the only reason I didn't give it that last half uh, a point out of five, out of five stars is because. Um, you know, TouchWiz is still not perfect. Um, it's a little bit too naturey for me. It's really just an opinionated feel. I really wish it was more AOSP. I really wish it was total AOSP. Um, but I think that that would take away from some of the great features like, uh, you know, some of the motion things, S voice and all that stuff. But they could still include that. So, you know, I think most people are probably going to disagree with me. They love, you know, people like TouchWiz. Uh, I, I would rather see AOSP. Um, not really too interested in all the uh, flashy features. Um, I just want a really smooth phone, and I want it right to the point, and that's why I still continue to use the Galaxy S3 on Verizon as my main phone. All right, guys, thank you so much. Leave comments below, and uh, definitely check out the links in the description, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys.